First of all, the nerve of your fucking ass to call me and tell me your fucking problem. It's not my... Fuck off. Get lost. Get off. And take your stupid subscription and cancel. Who cares, Dina? Fuck you. Fuck you, cunt. Fuck you. Get lost. Don't do my audience. I'll do my audience whatever I want. I'll piss on this audience if I... Douche. I do have uh, issues about people leaving me. I want to control everyone in my atmosphere. I want... I am a puppet master, and I want everyone to be a puppet. He was saying goodbye to me, and he leaned in for a kiss, and I smiled so big that he literally kissed my teeth. Um, I cheated on every one of my boyfriends except for Howard. For real? Mm-hmm. The really? day I met Howard, my cheating days ended. You were a cheater? I was a cheater. I hate Beth. I think she's only after Howard's money, and she's, <laughs> and she's a real horse face. Can you bang any of those stripper broads on the uh, on the show? Teresa Lynn said you banged up. Teresa who? Ooh, she was on here. Wait, she told, she was in your movie, thing. Private Parts. <laughs> oh, Amy. One of the, uh, no, no, no. Teresa, you, the, the one with the... Oh, no. The the she, she never said that. She told That's me. That's a lie. Oh. To admit you're lying. That's Tony. She called Tony. Did I ever bank Teresa Lynn? Take in New Jersey. Welcome to the wrap-up show. Does any of you gentlemen believe that Beth actually loves Howard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let's cut right to the nitty-gritty. <laughs> Artie and I spent last weekend with him, and if she's in love, then she should get a fucking Oscar. Right? If she's not in love, then she should get If she's in love, then she should get an Oscar. Uh, <laughs> 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 Howard is Beth. Howard is Beth. I'm knitting baby booties. <laughs> what are you doing, Abby? <laughs> I'm knitting baby booties. <laughs> I could just see our blonde, our blonde curly haired son. At least you don't have to pretend your dog is actually a child. <laughs> Beth once even said to me, it was funny too, because what Beth once said to me, you know, I wouldn't mind being engaged forever. Like, like this was, you know, years ago. She goes, I just think the ring is so great. I would uh -huh. love to, you know, it's romantic. And, and it's romantic yeah. and it's kind of cool. But the second. I uh, popped a question. She was like, well, let's get on the phone and tell everyone we're getting married. I went, whoa, whoa. Yeah. No, 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 we're not getting married. We're engaged. <laughs> There's no such thing. You know what it is? I'm so self-important. I just don't even remember meeting anyone. She was up here one day and I introduced you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I'm, cured. I'm not going to be cured of any. I am me. I am just going to a psychiatrist so that I can feel better about certain issues in my life. That's all. Welcome, ladies and gents, to QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Phil Moore, a.k.a. Jim Fix. And with me for this next breakdown, as yet untitled, is Miss Sam. How are you, my dear? Oh, so excited to break down this amazing show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, we're going to go right into it. The first one, this is from, we continued this day that I, uh, continue, I did with um, Ben. It was a session I did with Ben last weekend. Uh, he helped out. Everybody's had a, a run of doing, I had James, Len, and now Ben, but also uh, Wayne is going to help me with some breakdown stuff to get caught up. So we're really tackling this, like, I don't know. People Gangbusters. Building, people t putting sand like bags in front of the levee. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody's throwing stuff to each other. This first one's called Date Night with, um, oh, sorry, Brilliant or Narcissist. And these are all from James T. So thank you, James. November 19th, <laughs> Channel 100, the, the Channel 100 that we're on right now on Sirius XM. Channel 100 News went on the air in 2005. In other words, we were still on regular radio, but we, I said, I said, you know, we got to put something on these channels right now. And we put the <laughs> Howard 100 News. And so on Sirius, they were reporting on everything we were doing. <laughs> I, I dare I say, I think it was brilliant on my part. I, I, I'm just, <laughs> it was brilliant. You remember Well, that. then where did it go, motherfucker? Where, like, right, exactly. where, that was a brilliant idea. And then you castrated them, and then you unceremoniously let them go, and nobody got to ask any questions. Isn't it funny that he mentions that he brings it up as if some kind of, like, victory lap, but it is something that normally he wouldn't because he knows it went to shit. But he is the reason why it went to shit. Do you know what I'm saying? He's the one that cut their balls off, mm -hmm. and he's also the one that hired too many in the beginning to begin yep. with. Yep. And he also kept knocking them for doing the thing that he asked them to do on a constant basis. Um, someone just posted on one of the like Dabbleverse or one of the Shuli Anonymous, I think it was Shuli's Anon Shuli Anonymous uh, page on Reddit, that he filed for bankruptcy in 2011, Shuli did, and then couldn't 
uh, organ couldn't organize it properly to actually uh, go through with it and and uh, make sure that he got all his I's dotted and his T's crossed. So it got thrown out, but it did indicate apparently that he was making eighty five thousand a year. Oh wow! So I mean, I know that sounds like a lot of money to most people. Uh, not you know, in depending New York where City, but not, but not in New York City. So what what would you say based on your I don't know enough about it, but what would be a oh, living please. wage? What would be a living wage in New York? In New York, like for me, regular person, I'd say 65. Okay. And so I'd say in New York City, I'd say it has to be at least probably around 80 to 95. So it should be closer to like, it, it should be closer to low six, like 100,000 if you want to be comfortable. If you want to be comfortable and pay your bills on time, yeah. <laughs> and oh, have fuck. enough to, like, maybe go out to dinner once a month. <laughs> but he had to file for bankruptcy in 2011? Like, what What the hell? Well, I mean, I could see that easily happening to people who want to do more than just sit at home and pay bills. If you want to go out, if you want to get some new swag, if you want to party or whatever, that's mm-hmm. going to cost you. I mean, a night out of the town in New York City, even a night, like, Rick and I went out to a nice dinner and mm-hmm. it was, you know, two drinks, really nice appetizers, nice dinner and dessert. I think the bill was two seventy five. Okay. So, you know, that's not cheap. <laughs> that's not a box of popcorn and a Coke. No. No, it isn't. Uh, but that's that's not something you do all the time. That's a special occasion. No, that's what Whatever. I'm that's, saying. Yeah, exactly. It's like if if you're somebody who doesn't know how to prioritize what's important, then, yeah, you'll be filing for bankruptcy. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's going to take a bow, okay? Once in a while, I have to compliment myself. <laughs> Nobody else will. I put a Howard 100 <laughs> News all day and all night before we got here. Come on, that was pretty fucking good. A full news department devoted to just us. Either it was brilliant or I'm fucking have a real narcissistic problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could be a combination. Could be a combo. <laughs> Well, if anybody recalls, back in the day, he couldn't be on the air. And, of course, at K-Rock, he had to go, eh, 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 every time yeah. uh, they mentioned it. So he had to have some type of content for people who got the gear in advance. But I'd say most people wait until he was already on the air before they got their serious. I think, yes. And I think it's brilliant because he also hired people that – made it good you know instead of just saying oh it's brilliant because i made it no actually the people who were on the news department made it pretty brilliant with the way they deliver the news the angst between them that was Mm. great fodder yeah i'd say so next one um whining about oprah round two and now i'm going to add to our calendar november 8th 2023 you know what happened then? I just told you. Oprah appeared before me in the Sirius XM hype video that they played <laughs> for some deal. reason. Yeah. They sh- they felt showing an Let's image of someone who doesn't. Day. Yeah, yeah. They, they did a hype video where when I'm the next person coming out and Oprah appears first. I love that. I love that. You know that was calculated. Oh, yeah. And, of course, she's a bigger name than you, dipshit. It doesn't matter yeah. which you built. She's Oprah. She's not anymore, but she was back then. God, now people are very onto her bullshit, especially after the Maui fires. <laughs> no kidding. Fuck. Don't. And Oprah doesn't even work for this company. No, there's no Oprah no. channel anymore, is there? Let's face it. I'm constantly insulted, but that's okay. <laughs> I keep, I keep rocking on. Uh, it- so my question is, guys, and this is a serious, this is a serious question. Pardon the serious. expression. Um, if if he is insulted and he's so downtrodden by this company, why would you stay unless you had no other options, which is exactly why he's staying? Well, we all saw that presentation that he made this year where he didn't know why he was there and he's too good to do this. But yet he's dragged on stage to make some sort of speech, which was terrible and on the fly and just awful. So- Completely shit. Complete dog shit. And I think why, I don't know why else would he stay except for there's nowhere else to go, honey. I mean, you have no other options. HBO, (laughs) you know, Showtime. (laughs) Yeah. What else? Uh, CNN. Like Nobody's calling you. Nobody wants you. Even Greg Gutfeld got a late night show. 
what a fucking loser you are. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You've got like uh, he there is the option. There's always the option. The one we talk about all the time. It's what we did. Make your own show. Go somewhere. Put the money in. He you know, he can easily afford top of the line gear anytime. He could have the biggest bandwidth possible with the money he has and he could start a Joe Rogan show. The only problem there is you're going to be compared to Joe Rogan and you're you've spent such a long time bullshitting and talking about how podcasts are dog shit and they're not real and all this stuff that you have become one not realizing it but then if you go out on your own then you are officially a podcast well we have firsthand experience where it's do you sink or swim like are you going to and there is anxiety with all of that sort of thing especially when you're used to something because Mm -hmm. it becomes it becomes repetitive and it becomes comfortable and you just can't see a vision outside of the current thing you're doing. So when right. you decide to do something for yourself, of course, there's anxiety built around it and everything else. But for somebody who clearly thinks of himself as some sort of genius or brilliance or creative, I wouldn't have any qualms building my own thing again. You did it before. Apparently, that's what you think. So do it again. Yeah, thinking back when we started, I I had zero anxiety because I was fed the fuck up over at uh, RG and I knew that for a fact people would follow if they knew there was an alternative. There just wasn't at the time. I mean, who are these podcasts? They dealt with some stern stuff, but not regularly. Like they dealt with at that uh, that time they were reviewing podcasts and um, they didn't focus on Stuttering John at that time. And so whatever else, I knew that if you provide the outlet, if you provide something that not another person is providing, there's going to be a market for it. Absolutely. Like, you know, it's it's a reason why people go one way or the other on the political spectrum. They know they're going to cater to people on one side or the other, maybe even both, like people that want to hear the 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 talking points and use them for their own show. I mean, there's always there are always alternatives. I'm saying if you want to be creative or if you want to if you have the the motivation to try something for yourself, you can do it. I always say there's a niche for everything. And, you know, we tapped into something. But even politically speaking, the niche of the echo chamber, I get it. But Mm -hmm. even when you and I talk personally about politics or anything, I always find it interesting that I think more people are like us, where we don't really think of team blue or team red. We're like, what's team good idea? And what's team not making sense? You know what I mean? Like, what what is the best thing for... (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't really like what I don't really like placing ideas into categories. I just like what ideas make sense. OK, so that's the idea of that person or that's the idea of this person. Fine. But I don't look at ideas as teams. They're just either good ideas or bad ideas. And whoever decides to take the flag and run with those ideas, then I guess that's your problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, or theirs if they fuck it up. The the next right. one is so sorry, we're still playing the same one. Hold on. Doesn't matter. My spirit is never diminished. <laughs> I'm I'm something what? else, man. Nah. Uh, was, finish is is it hurting you that contortion you need uh, to do to pat yourself on the back? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my god. Listen, Robin. if I don't <laughs> Wow. Well, she made a gymnastics analogy. (laughs) Oh, she was great. That was brilliant. I I remember thinking when I heard this, he, he, you know, when people sound defeated before they finish what they're saying? Oh, yes. He sounds like that every fucking time. Like as it's coming out of his mouth, you know, he has zero faith in what he's saying. We just got that when we listened to some New Year's slog. (laughs) (laughs) Every single thing out of that person's mouth sounded defeated. Oh, my God. It was like the the point where Sam felt sympathy. I did. I did. I just couldn't imagine. I was just like this. I mean, it's more sad than listening to someone sing Old Ang Syne or whatever. (laughs) At least you say, I think you said it correctly, actually. I always fuck that up. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, there's just, it's, it's, what you, what's the word you, the phrase you used, echo chamber. That's what he yes. is. His, he is his own, he is his own cheerleading squad. His own, his own news department went a long time ago. He had to make everything self sufficient and now it's self insufficient. 
and now the, the the person that he marginalized, the newswoman, he's asking for that back pat, and she's busy <laughs> thinking of amazing analogies to tell you to fuck off. Well, think about it. The, the what does he have left? What does he have in his mind now? Like the, to to give him any kind of like you know supply. His mother, she doesn't give it to him. Beth but doesn't want to be near him. Robin would probably like to be somewhere closer to him than she is, but she knows she's not there for anything other than agree with me, agree with me. And then Ralph's dead. Ralph's who dead. else is there? Who else is there? Well, that's why I find this interesting because Ralph is dead. So why are we going down memory lane of your good ideas that don't exist anymore? Isn't this a little strange that this is coming up now that Ralph is dead. I feel like Howard's brain is going to, I need a boost. And so I'm going to try to go to this well that now is bringing up things. And I didn't think of the consequences of remembering these things, which are your that, audience is automatically going to think of, yeah, remember the good times that don't exist anymore. <laughs> remember when I married Nicole. Solo. Remember when I married Nicole? <laughs> like OJ remembering all the good times. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, you know the ending. I needed to get it back to the Browns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, pat myself Brown. on the back. There's nobody around here is gonna do it. <laughs> Imagine I'm I'm waiting to go out on stage, and there's a big video talking about the accomplishments of Sirius XM, and Oprah comes on first. And I went, does Oprah work here? Isn't she the one who got 50 million for the company? And I don't think she ever did really much and then for it. She, she ran away. Yeah. <laughs> Great. They couldn't find her. <laughs> the, the fun, the, my, my favorite part of that audio is if she agreed to be interviewed by him, he would do uh, he would do a break, uh, like a, what do you call it? What, what do we call it? Reshinding, like so fast. Oh, my God. He would look He'd like Mia in acro class, for fuck's sake. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Oh, the picture of Gerald Ford. <laughs> <laughs> the the impact the impact would be like when <laughs> Dodi Al Fayed's fucking limo <laughs> hit the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> macabre guys. Thinking about it. <laughs> and then the fact that the royal family didn't give a fuck about his father, basically you know, gave him the two middle fingers. Do you know I spoke to someone uh, who 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 actually does fix? He's a mechanic, actually, ages ago, and I asked him about the whole <laughs> lady die, like the impact and stuff. He said, you know, it wasn't the crash that killed them. The problem was the car was built, designed to be super strong. Like, and most cars are designed to fold on impact and basically take the brunt of the inertia so that when you, you know, like if you've seen those smart cars, they're really small, like boxy. Yeah. Have you seen the crash test? The, the frame inside is super strong, but the outside is, you know, just cheap, hot, cheap shit so that the, the internal frame stays intact but the impact stuff is taken away by that crap stuff on the outside and that they're not meant to survive. That car was meant to take hits or take, you know, you know, bounce bullets off it and stuff. And he said, if they'd been in a regular Mercedes, they might have, they, they would have had a better chance of surviving. Wow. I mean, yeah. she did survive initially the ambulance driver or firefighter, whatever said that it was internal. She internal was like, injuries. Oh, what happened? And he was talking to her and he sent her off away. But then for some reason, she went to a hospital further away than necessary. And I don't understand that part, but OK. And yeah, then she apparently the passed away there. And then that, you know, that miserable cunt said, no, uh, we're not going to Charles. You're not going to retrieve the body at first. And he had a big fight with her. And then they, she got to go get retrieved because technically she's an ex-wife. So that's yeah. not royal protocol but you have the whole world at your doorstep laying i don't know a million basically a forest on the gate <laughs> i think it would be a good time to send your fucking plane <laughs> well yeah it, it, she went they needed to go to another hospital because the ems guy needed time to put the pillow over her head <laughs> <laughs> i know that's conspiracy shit guys I'm not that'll just be that that'll be for one of our other shows we'll be working on <laughs> Yeah. Um, number, the next one here is called Date Night with Ben Stern. She was excited to go out to dinner because she got all dolled up and, you know, she loves to put on a nice outfit and, you know, and she looked yeah. great. But I'm sitting there like Mr. Miserable. I'm looking <laughs> at my watch. I'm like, oh, God, I got to wait till fuck. And the restaurant was near our house. So, like, you know, 
<laughs> 10 to quarter to 7. I wanted to leave at 6.30, hoping maybe we'd get there early and <laughs> get either early. Start things up. <laughs> oh, and I'm, I've, I've turned into my parents because as soon as we sit down at the restaurant, they're all having drinks. I don't drink. I know, I'm a party. You, you're fantasizing what it must be like to be with me. It's, 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 it's unbelievably great. I would, I'd be slipping him Mickey's. Like, Beth, get some Molly from some street dealer and put it in water. He won't notice the difference. Get him high and just have a good time. I'm sorry. I would be slipping I'd him be, drugs. Drugs? I'd be cutting brake lines. I'd be fucking greasing up greasing up the, the front steps. <laughs> it would look Fuck. like a, a cartel startup of your car. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Like the, so, but the thing is he's, if he is, he's 70 now, I don't know too many, I'm going to say people in their late sixties or mid sixties, even that are enjoying alcohol anymore. I mean, it's just something you have to get rid of in your old age, older age. You might have a nice glad bit of glass of wine or something. My mother's 83 going to be, I think she just turned 84. Um, she, I shouldn't say that, but she's 39 guys, according to, you know, real, real, you know, uh, documents. But, um, She'll enjoy like a half a beer or a beer, like a regular beer, you know, and, and she doesn't, you know, but she, that's, that's, I think not such an issue, but with him, it's just that loss of control. I think more than anything, it's not his age and it's not his health unless he's on meds that we're not aware of. And he's not, he's not forthcoming about. I mean, coming from a huge partier in my day, I don't enjoy that feeling like it's not the same. You you're never going to catch those highs of when you had no responsibilities, out night after night. It's not going to happen. So you the just succumb to the reality, than, and it's yeah. not bad either. There's other ways no. to have fun, guys. <laughs> well, the the recovery. It's just that the recovery. Pro, the thing that always keeps me away from it these days is the recovery process is so Ugh. much worse than it used to be. Oh, it's hell on earth. It's Remember how you used to rebound honor. after like a fucking bender? You could literally go into work and do whatever and maybe wait. You could save the throw up until after work. I would go out on my break, like sleep in my car, maybe throw up out the side of the door. Who right. knows? But it just, you know, at sometimes True, <laughs> just trooping it out. You would just be so good at it. And then probably when I hit 30 or so, yeah, 30. But that's when I really... Even I, I had Mia at 25, but I could still go out. So like when I didn't, my parents watched her for a night or something, I could still recover the next day pretty well. But then once I hit 30, it's like something changed. Like I yep. just did not, I could not get up the next day. My head, I had ice on it, heat on it. I can't get rid of this headache. Why am I so down? I used to be able to pick it up and have two hours of sleep and I'd be fine. I don't I know what strictly, happens. Strictly age related, nothing else. I don't believe it has to be anything else because nothing else changed except for I'm older. Right. Everyone's having cocktails. And I'm like, yeah, just uh, I'll have some Perrier. And I go, can we see the menus? I, I just want to study the menu. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get everyone ordering as quick as possible. Oh. And none of them are looking at their menus. <laughs> right. Including my wife. And I immediately pick up the menu and I'm like, oh, halibut. <laughs> I then try to I go, huh? honey, my mom talib. It's big Anna Nicole and Howard K. Stern. I, I mean, think this really. is hilarious. And yeah, you know, but he, he's the rich friend that you have that's gonna pay for your dinners or whoever else's your friend's dinners, but he doesn't have fun. Like no. you are you're better be you're better off, Beth, being married to one of your gay friends and then you can actually have a party if you want. Well, to. if she look, let's say if she decided to file for divorce and they get divorced. And then, I mean, I, he releases all kinds of things about her as if we don't already know her, her real, her likely story. Um, but then she gets, let's say, 10 million in a settlement or whatever. That's plenty of money to just like party moderately for the rest of your, your life. I say so. And I think if she was smart, she was hoarding pictures, hoarding information, yep. you know, lay it on. I would file the divorce papers. If this is your idea of a good night when he never goes out and he's holding a menu, announcing it like it's, I don't know, 
what a speech to Congress. Hey, look at this. <laughs> well, look, I, printed in <laughs> Pittsburgh. It's just well, fucking I, ridiculous. It is. We need it to is. pass this souffle. You're right. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think I, and like no one's even looking. <laughs> so I'm studying the menu. I knew exactly what I was getting. I got halibut. <laughs> I got a little like a zucchini lasagna. <laughs> so he was holding on the menu, ho hoping that people would get the hint and start ordering. It was like when I go out to the like foyer and I've got my jacket on. I'm like, all right, guys, let's go. And everybody else is still doing that 30 minute goodbye. <laughs> yeah. No one's getting the hint. <laughs> that's understandable. To, uh, zucchini lasagna. Oh, that yeah. sounds great. I would love to pay for a zucchini lasagna. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> You know, the guys in the kitchen are going, what a fucking pustata. <laughs> <laughs> like as an appetizer. And I'm also, I knew right away what I wanted. You knew and everything see, you were going to order. Uh, oh, yes. Immediately. <laughs> because you know what happens? Then the waiter comes over and then everyone goes, oh, can we just have a few minutes? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no <laughs> few minutes. You've had five, ten minutes. Can everyone, I just wanted to say to everyone, can everyone take a minute of silence before we start talking and study the menu? Well, <laughs> like it's your SATs. <laughs> this really is like a game show. You know when the clock is clocking yeah. down? Yeah. It's Jeopardy. You have to press the buzzer. I mean, this is just insane. Who would want to do this? You might as well just bring one of those sand dials and turn it over and say, okay. <laughs> when it gets, <laughs> you better have it studied and read and know what you want. Is I refresh my memory on the price is right. Does the wheel have a number on it that says 79? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I gotta Photoshop that sometime. Oh, oh okay. If you I, had done that, uh, I know I didn't. I did it. But now I can't even concentrate on what people are saying because my brain is just like, please, everybody, just fucking look at the menu. Please, please, please. And it's another couple sitting there and my wife's engaged with them and, and talking and I'm, and I look like I'm engaged, but I'm really not. I'm thinking, oh, I just want to order. If we could just put in the order. Cause it. Oh my God. Yeah. You talk to nobody. You do nothing all day. You've done nothing for years now, especially since COVID. The first sort of human interactions at a normal place. This is what? It's He's like, it's, a, it's like, it's. It's more than that. It's like too much to hide, too yep. much tension built up. I mean, imagine the tension between him and Beth since especially COVID and everything else building up. So you're sitting next to this person. Ralph died. You have no outlet. Now you're yep. sitting next to two people that you have to be phony as fuck to, and they're not ordering. I, I just can see the tension and steam rising and rising and building and building. Well, not only that, but it's it's the idea that he he he's he's Howard Stern and he knows he's a killjoy. And yet he's got this persona like he he thinks he has this persona of someone who's going to make people laugh and he's funny and there's there's humor involved. And yet he can't do that on his own when he's on like when he's in with celeb parties, he's a, a wet noodle. And when he's in on uh, like Letterman and the old late night shows or Colbert, he's a fucking bore. So. I don't know. I think everybody knows at this point that all he is is a, a walk it, a walking wallet with a wig on, basically, and that's exactly. it. Exactly. And he doesn't want to perform. And a dinner no. is a performance because he has to perform. I'm human. I'm funny. Yeah. I'm I'm the things that you think of me, but I'm not. And that's work. also Beth. Also, think about this. She, in the beginning, got party image stern. So she yep. got to go to the P. Diddy white party. She was going to these red carpets with him. They were drunk, having dinner at Nobu and doing all these fun sort of things. That yep. lifestyle has been gone for a long time. So imagine her, too, thinking this is going to be my sort of life, playing beer pong at Bon Jovi's on the, at the Hamptons weekend, going to Billy yep. Joel's house with <laughs> Katie Lee and having a huge dance party. All of that is gone. Yeah. So now... You're left with this wig and you're sitting here and he can't even do the basic, the basic functions for dinner. 
Yeah, no, he can't. The basic, yeah, what, what's it called? The expectations. Now, don't you think that she should have taken a hint from Katie Lee when Katie Lee left Billy? 100% she should have taken a hint. She should have taken a hint before that, but when she saw her best friends, quote unquote, that's a big hint. Get the fuck out. Yep. We won't eat till 730. Then the waitress came over. None of them have looked at the and like it, they've drunk. They've been drinking now for like ten minutes, and I don't drink. <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there, and then all of a sudden the, the waitress came over, and, she, and she's standing there. No one's even paying attention to her. And I go, "Oh, look who's here, the waitress." <laughs> and I, I go, "Oh," and she goes, "Um, would you like to order?" I'm like, "Thank God." And then all everyone goes, "Oh, I haven't even looked at the menu." I go. I have looked at the menu. Why don't you all look at the menu and I'll order first. While I'm ordering, you can decide what you want. Oof. And yeah. so immediately I went, give me the zucchini lasagna. I'll have halibut and a side of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and that takes all of five seconds. Right. You got to know a pelican is going to go for fish first. This is so arduous. Like this is supposed to be fun. Yeah. These things you're listening to that sound like hell on earth in your life or mine would be fun. I would you, recall these things and say, oh, my gosh, the menu was so good. We were all having drinks. It was a really great time. We were talking so much that we didn't even get to look at the menu. But by the time that the waitress came over, we were looking and we said, OK, we're just going to order this appetizer. And then we said, well, maybe I'll get the hell of it, but come back later and we'll have some shots and yeah. it'll be a good time. I, <clears throat> none of this happens. Food becomes the extra guest in a situation like that. It's almost incidental. Like even if you're at a good restaurant, you're having fun and then you're eating. There might even be like a big lag between what meals come to the table, especially if it's a large group. And then you're slowly making your way through the courses, but you're talking, you're, you're, you know, emoting, you're, you're, you're relating you're trying to relate at least on some human human level and then you're having drinks you're getting a waiter cake okay, can we get another champagne here whatever the fuck no not him he really is like like why did you take the senior citizen out for dinner i it just feels the more he talks about ben too like saying oh that's what my father's like i'm turning into my parents yes mm -hmm. you officially are your parents so mm -hmm. you know and that's not a bad thing necessarily Except for he's taking the worst parts of his parents. Yes. And Ben and Ray actually loved each other. So they knew each other's habits and they still went out to dinner with each other. Right. He can't like this is torture for him. This is worse than work because he's not getting paid. He will go out of pocket. He can't drink. I'm sure it's he can't drink. Not he doesn't want to drink. At this point, I'd say it's it's medical. Like it's definitely something like he's taking meds and they he can't drink with the meds. Well, and we know he has the prostate thing, but that turned out to be nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you just get to a certain age and you're this much of a hypochondriac, you just know alcohol is not going to be good for possible dementia or liver or anything yep. else. You know? 100%. Yep. And also, if he's out of practice drinking, it wouldn't take a few more than a few drinks for he started getting loose-lipped and he doesn't know what he's going to say. Ralph's dad. Yep. Yep. <laughs> They don't have any time to make. They haven't decision. even opened up. They, they haven't. <laughs> and then, um, and then, uh, and then the waitress goes. And of course, there are specials. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife goes, oh, can you tell us the specials? I go, honey, the specials are written down right here, and I hand everyone you the card with the specials. Your dad. Oh well, my because god. I, I, it's like <laughs> no, no. If everyone had studied ahead of time, we would have been had this confusion. Why? And I know what's going to happen. The waitress. Okay. Like, this is just torturous. This but is four minutes, guys. It, but it's I a, hope but everybody it's a at whole that evening dinner, for someone. <laughs> I, I, I hope everybody at that dinner is listening how much he doesn't enjoy your company, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thankfully, he, they have no listeners, so it's not a problem. It really oh, is good. like his own closet he's talking into. Closed closet. He's going to walk away, even though I've ordered. Yeah. And I'm going to go, can you put my order in? Why do I have to be penalized <laughs> if these people aren't ready? I mean, I can't take it. I can't. I can't take it. I'm not built for this world. <laughs> I'm really not. <laughs> Man, that's a bumper sticker. <laughs> now, listen, We, uh, I have people who I know I go out to dinner with that anytime there's a menu, they always have, oh, 
can I just change this or can I just, and I know it's coming. Rick and I, we love these people, but every time we go out to dinner with them, it never changes. We just know what it's going to be. And there's a couple times where I've maybe given a sigh or something where I'm like, I, I just, they just are way too fucking picky and way too fucking nothing's ever there's never a menu I've handed to them or they've been handed where I've not seen them say, can I do something different on the thing that I want? Or do you have something that's not on the menu that you can make for me? Like, right. I don't know what it is about them, but that's just the way they are. But they're so it, much fun. And I, it ain't, I already it ain't in allergies. my head planned for it. What? It's it's not allergies. Like they have to no, have certain it's just omissions. Being no. them. This is just okay. what they do when we go out. Okay. Well, I, you have listen, to mentally I, prepare for it. If yeah. you're not in the mood, though, I will say you do give that what the fuck eyes and. Oh, yeah. <sighs> well, I don't know. I, I've been like I'm, I, I am picky. Like I'm a not I'm a no um, condiments guy for the most part. Like I don't you know, whatever it is, even salad on my salad. I'll have unless it's Greek salad, mostly just put like lemon on it or a bit of olive oil, maybe whatever. But nothing like no dressing. I don't want a fucking dressing on my burgers. I don't want. May, don't even come to me with mayo. I may just fucking hand you your head. <laughs> I don't want mustard, ketchup for fries once in a while, but not really. I'm actually, I, well, now that I'm in, in Indonesia, I get my, back my taste for sambal. Do you know what that is? No. It's basically chili ketchup. Like Heinz makes it. Basically, it's pepper. It's it's like red oh, cayenne pepper that. in ketchup. Yeah, and then but but again, it's still sweet and spicy. I'm not not super crazy about it. But there's people I've seen that have like fucking Niagara Falls of condiments on whatever fucking hot dog. It disgusts me. I can't stand it. What that's saying <laughs> is this food is so shit. I have to dress it up with a bottle of fucking Heinz. You name it. <laughs> uh, so that's I'm I just so you know, no condiments, no beaches, no condiments, guys. That's my issue. You don't like peaches? Peaches? Beaches. Wait, what did you Peaches. Say? Oh. <laughs> yeah, peaches. Peaches, too. I hate that, too. Fuck them. I, I love peaches. <laughs> of course. And not the song, either. I'm not, I'm not meant... But, but uh, evidently, no one caught on because my, my wife even said, oh, you were pleasant, you know, you know. In other words, she's oh, not used to me. Notice. They didn't notice. They didn't notice. They didn't notice. Okay, that's good. That's even better. <laughs> You were wallpaper. <laughs> Nobody's paying attention to his complaining. <laughs> okay. The next one is called JD forgets to think before he speaks. Although I'm sure this is a, a normal thing. So a JD is face tat mommy full of face tats. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> it, are there so many face tats that is she, is she like, like covered in them to the point that you can't even see her face? Kinda, yeah. She, you, you can like make out a hint of what her face looks like, but yeah, there are so many tattoos on her face now. It's, it's, uh, that's all you see. She, I'm thinking of getting multiple face tats to hide what's going on <laughs> on my face. Will certainly distract from. Uh, from what? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Oh what do you say? Right, you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> What, oh from that God. nose that looks like the Manhattan Project? <laughs> he literally was he was promoting face tats for him for his fucking fugly ass face. Are yeah. you kidding? Go yeah. JD. And he yeah. just let that slip right off of his tongue. Like there was no there hesitation. Was no, hesitation. no, yeah. It'll certainly hide that fucking that fucking asshole of a face of yours, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, that schnoz. <laughs> yeah. The next one, Wiggy fucks up. This is the last one for uh, November 13th. Wiggy fucks up the audio and tries to shift the blame. Wolfie is our correspondent, and he scored an exclusive interview with Violent J and Sarah. Okay. So uh, we feel pretty honored by that. Violent J told Wolfie some of the ideas he suggested to Sarah to do on her OnlyFans. This is a uh, part oh, of the exclusive he, he, interview. I'm constantly doing Wow. I'm constantly oh, giving, I'm constantly giving her fucking ideas. And when <laughs> I go through Instagram out of control, huh? and, I, and I see how he's doing some dope shit. That's <laughs> wait a second. Wait, wait. What's going on here? <laughs> what's going on? Is somebody hitting a button or something? Is that, okay, so welcome to Tin Can Radio, guys. It's a great clip. Thanks. Yeah, that one's just and the last the next one, guys, we're going on to November 14th. There's only three clips. This one's called Jennifer Vitz School's Stern. 
Oh, good. It's Jennifer Witz, our CEO. Ah. Jennifer, I'm having trouble articulating. What is, what is the big news out of Sirius XM? You're some moron, aren't you? It's simple, stupid. Listen to me. We rolled out the preview for next year's quarter three analysis of the stock index margins for our move into high low thresholds. You get it? What? Oh, okay. Robin Jesus understands. fucking Christ. How do you not get this? You don't understand stock dividends relative to market share, you simple bitch. Huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy. I, listen, whatever you're doing is working because I understand our stock price. Uh, a year ago was 579 and today it's 467 so we must be doing something <laughs> right listen our ad prices are dropping faster than your boner when you watch straight porn ah <laughs> this is insulting oh. <laughs> that's actually so yeah. he's mocking the fact that the stock price is down even though in america right now if you have a 401k or you're in mutual funds you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself this cannot continue for much longer. There's going to be a crash at some point because it's just been up, up quarter after quarter. So me personally, I'm just preparing for the fallout because there's just no way it can stay up this high for regular, for your, people know what I'm saying. And I just think the fact that through this, Sirius XM stock is down. Like we are having the biggest stock market boom Everybody's retirements is up. I mean, that's just the fact. Not yeah. everyday prices, though. That's the problem. So people like me, you know, you look at your retirement and you look at your whatever and you're seeing it and you're thinking, okay, that's great, but I'm not retiring for another how many years? I can't take this money out. It doesn't matter. Well, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'd have penalties up the yin-yang if I decided yes. I wanted to take out money. So right. I'm not doing that. But it's fine. Except for the fact prices are so high. So yeah, it really possibly. doesn't have a fucking function unless you are that type of person who has the ability to, you know, go in and out of stocks and you're it's not based on a retirement because you have to keep it, especially if you're at my age. Well, the just recent just today on our Facebook page, I suggest uh, you give it a look. The the there's definitely uh, there's some numbers released for serious. I have to G Chup sent me a, a link and it's something about uh, how they've lost subscribers again and whatever. It's like, you know, they lost on this and they lost on that and, and it, they're clearly not gaining any foothold in the marketplace. No. And there's no more. You have to also think, well, what new markets are you going to break into? You already are on thin ice with the car industry mm -hmm. because the, this the supply chain for cars and new cars there's a problem with it so that's an issue but there's also an issue in the price of cars and people being able to afford them there's also this push for electric cars which nobody's buying into you right. then had the big five with the auto workers who went on strike for more wages which is obviously going to bleed into the price of new cars big so time. what what other new market is Sirius XM going to tap into essentially <laughs> the used car what? Market? <laughs> I, I don't know how you tap into new markets. Where is there to go, in your opinion? Because I I'm don't not, know. I'm not joking. They're going to have to start installing Sirius XM in a fucking Pontiac Firefly. You know, I, I mean, know. They, yeah, give me an Osmobile. Put it yeah, in there. <laughs> yeah, look, here's a Brom. <laughs> <laughs> Look, my my aunt's Pontiac Parisienne has Sirius X7. <laughs> For real? Yeah, no, I mean, like, because the thing is, okay, they redid the app. Apparently, they've re now. If you reload your, no, sorry, update your app, they've brought back the 15 second forward thing or or right. you know queue thing because clearly they must have had millions of complaints about it, literally millions. I bet. Yeah. I I think okay. So then, if you go the tech route. Well, what cell phone company can you tap into to possibly have it as a free? So you sign up for Verizon, you buy this model of phone, and maybe it'll give you a direct free three months. I mean, that could be a possibility, but sure. I just don't see them even signing on to something like that. 
Well, no, like you, you like the new Galaxy, which actually looks really nice. I, I would get it if it didn't cost fucking, you know, like a pair of braces um, in, to buy it. It was the S24 Ultra, which all the bells and whistles is probably more powerful than a lot of people's computers at this point. You could have that like a Netflix, the way Netflix is kind of hardwired into tablets and stuff. You yeah. could have, yeah, you could literally say, look, give us, I don't know, two cents for every fucking device these you sell, you know, that kind of thing. And they throw it in the price. And that might help them in the long run somewhere. Think of how many people buy this type of phone all over the, you know, iPhone especially. The iPhone's not going to do it, and they're not going to get in business with they're a, a Apple. They're not going to get that. But plus there's but a lot of people China, like you and my, and my brother-in-law and sister, they don't do iPhones. They are like an anti-Apple family. Oh, yeah. For, so, And I know people like that. And mm-hmm. I understand. But I just think... If you guys don't strategize what market you're going to tap into because the car market is done for you guys, what, what what's next? You have to tap into another market. Well, what's what the main problem in in buying new cars these days is what so much is it the the bad interest rates? Is it just the the the, the cost of cars themselves going up for no good discernible reason or is and people are from what I remember um, not just during the pandemic, obviously post pandemic, wasn't there some type of, um, boom, like people deciding like, what's it called? Uh, not revenge spending. What is it called? Um, well, people, people tapped into, they had pandemic spending money. So people it. bought new cars during then the supply chain was all fucked up because of COVID. And so then there was a lull of being able to get the supplies to make said new cars. Okay. So, but then once that tapered off and people got what they got from their COVID spending, then you had, in, it, they dumped money into the electric car market, made a ton of these cars that nobody were buying, nobody mm-hmm. was buying. Mm-hmm. And now you have the interest rate problem, which the Fed kept raising, raising, raising. And most yeah. people can't just on a dime spend thirty-five to $40,000 on a new car, let alone twenty five. dollars So it's, it's a bit and, – and then you – I just don't know how you're going to – what else are you going to do with Sirius XM besides cars? I just don't I don't know. It. I mean – You've got if you've got the tie into sports, I mean that's a draw, but it's and I guess it'll always be a draw. But again, there there are ways around that. People can get something else that's better. They they might want some coverage that's not supplied by Sirius XM. They should have been on top of this though. If you had a competent yep. CEO, you would have been cornering the market for smart TV. You would have been latching onto other apps that already exist within the sports world and put mm-hmm. your fucking content and do some sort of merger with them. Or have some sort of pay scale about what content you're delivering in conjunction with theirs. I mean, they are just missing all of these boats because they're stuck onto this limited mindset. Right. And can you think of a company that would want to swallow Sirius XM and like with the debt that they have and then take that on and then decidedly decide to just shave off programming? No, no one wants to buy Sirius XM. See, I would have said Spotify, but they made so many poor decisions with like the Mer- Meghan and Harry bullshit. Oh, God. And, you know, but they are succeeding with things like Rogan. So, you know, I I just think that the game right now, like the people who are, for example, the Daily uh, Wire, like Ben Shapiro's thing, that thing's just taken off massive because they're do- not only they're doing their own movies, they're doing they're combining the best of every world of their sort of right wing podcasting. And they've mm-hmm. just got anybody who's ever been an independent person. They're now just gate. They're just saying, come to the daily wire, come to the daily wire. So now all these people and they have their own, every smart TV, you can download the app. I mean, they were very thoughtful about how they cornered that market. I personally don't subscribe to it, but I understand why people would well, here's a, this this article just came out, and this might make some people laugh. Uh, it's from uh, January 29th 
of this year. Is Sirius XM paying more for a podcast than for Howard Stern? This is from InsiderRadio.com. Uh, How- Howard Stern has long been Sirius XM's biggest subscriber draw, and that has earned him top dollar. But as podcasting becomes a bigger part of Sirius XM's future, and question with questions over whether Stern 70 will stick with the radio show grind when his deal is up next year, the company's latest podcast signing may be more lucrative than Stern's contract. Sirius XM has re- in- inked a reported 100 million licensing deal for exclusive rights to the Smart Less podcast hosted by actors Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. Okay. Okay, so it says basically um, the, the terms of the three-year deal were not made public, but Bloom pegs it at 100 million. That is more than the 60 million that Wondery and Amazon paid in 2021 for exclusive rights to the content in 2021. Uh, while the deal parameters are different, the price tag may be higher than what Stern is paying. Uh, Sirius XM is paying Stern, which Forbes reported to be more than the ninety million. Nine, that's the, more than not, than ninety million. They spelled that incorrectly. They uh, wrote that wrong. Prior to his latest deal in two thousand twenty, Stern's previous five year contracts have reportedly paid him between eighty hundred eighty million and one hundred million a year. I don't believe it for a second. That that number is all bullshit. But he, they're definitely making more than Howard. Yeah, I. I just think if you are not, if you are not thinking about the app itself, the radio hookup itself, if you're not thinking about how you can make this much more available, easy, and in the mainstream, I mean, you never hear about anybody talking. I thought it was smart that they brought Megan Kelly on, by the way. Okay. I Just because she has what, a following. Right. But what I think they're missing is that they should have seen the people who were doing independent media and tried to get those people who already had a gigantic following that Mm -hmm. would have also brought something. But because they're so I don't know if it's ideologically driven or they just think the big splash in a headline of somebody's name versus a talent that actually has a following. The problem is, is that they kept hiring people who have never had an actual resume of being able to draw listeners. So yeah. you look at somebody, you can laugh at a Glenn Beck all you want, but that motherfucker has listeners and proven yeah. listeners who are loyal to him. So what they kept doing is bringing on headliners that don't have any experience in this realm of podcasting or radio. And mm-hmm. then the splash, once it's over and the dust settles, you're shit out of luck. And it's not bringing loyal listeners to your platform either. No, no. And then in, in actual fact, they're marketing. Uh, whoever's in charge of marketing at Sirius XM sucks ass. They just don't know how to sell this. And again, if it's provided free and then all of a sudden you get that whole, like you're in, in on the ground with uh, uh, your car and stuff and then you decide you want to, or you're stupid enough to uh, sign up and then you leave it on there because it's cheap enough and you don't miss it and you've got all kinds of money. Well, I guess maybe they're counting on that, but that's not a sustainable business model because people, trust me, I see it when people drop off on Patreon or they say they have no money or they can't afford it or they say like you know I love the content but this you know I, I, times are tough believe me I get it you uh, you get have it. to start shaving off the Netflix thing because you're not watching Netflix or if you watched everything on it you got to shave off Disney because you hate the content whatever the fuck it is and so people are getting more um, they're able to actually curate their own listening habits and viewing habits and they'll do it they're not afraid to cancel this subscription to a, a newspaper or whatever when they think uh, standards drop below a certain level right I I just think if they were smart and they knew that the interviewing um, radio show host thing wasn't working out for them, I would have done something radical when it came to the music. I mean, BPM has been one of their best channels they've ever had, and it's been a staple on Sirius XM since the beginning. Mm. I would have gone underground, counterculture, go into these clubs, listen to these DJs, actually do live performance streams for these mm-hmm. people who are really fucking cool. Because if you want to know where your If you want to know where the pulse is, go to those places, have those live performances stream constantly, send people there because people who love music will go and listen to that shit. Like they will literally be like, I can listen to this DJ who I can't afford to see in New York City. Like, I don't know, whoever, they would do it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, uh, there's only a little bit more of that. We'll go to the next one. Uh, throw the Peloton on the hobby pile. Yeah, Big Mike, you're on the air in uh, Maryland. Maryland. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Hey, Howard, I was wondering if you ever got your Peloton seat. Are you still getting treated like a peasant like the rest of us? No, I got it over the summer, finally. And uh, oddly, they sent me two. Like, like I couldn't get it for months. And then when I got it, two showed up, which I didn't need, but I ended up with two. And then um, here's the sad part. I, for so many months, my excuse was I'm not getting on the Peloton because the seat is broken. And now that I got the seat back, I haven't been on it once. I got to get back. Oh, in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. I, I broke the habit. Broke the habit. You just it, like everything else. Next clip, guys, is called Final Show at Madison Square Garden. What I wanted to ask you is when it comes time to hang it up, is there any chance that you could do your last sign off at like, uh, you know, in front of live audience at, at like Madison Square Garden? <laughs> I don't know about Madison Square Garden. That wouldn't be very intimate, but that's not a bad idea. You know, like maybe <laughs> who the fuck would attend? <laughs> he wouldn't even be able to sell out Shays in Buffalo. Well, what would be like, honest to God, and a Howard Stern appearance anywhere in the New York state, let's say in New York city, what would you possibly, if you were a booker and you're taking a chance on him, what's the size of the venue? 500 seats. It depends on who comes in. I don't even believe if it was just him signing off with no guarantee, Artie's going to be back. Jackie's yeah. going to be back. The cast, Richie Wilson, fucking, you know, I don't think Billy anybody West. would get, yeah. Billy West. Yeah, yeah. Nobody would care. No, I don't think so. Like when when your pal here, time it's time to you know walk into the walk into the sunset. Oh, please walk. I may be doing that with slouch into the sunset. <laughs> please, I want it to be like a pirate ship right off the plank with the crocodiles. Yeah. yeah, some fans. You know what I mean? Like maybe have have a have an event. Please, That's not please, a bad please. idea, Pablo. Please do do something, man, because. And I, I hope your brand and your, your your channels or whatever you decide to do, who, you know, where, whatever direction you go, even if you just got on live. We've heard this fake caller before. I, I don't remember exactly who the guy is, but he, I know he's a back office staffer. Uh, Len suggested, tell me what you think about this, doing the um, last day of Sirius, last day of K-Rock, because it's so painfully cringed that speech. I'm just wondering if maybe that might be good. I know there's video of it, and I can get the Howard TV footage, but I think the audio would be fun because it. he actually – remember how Johnny Carson always said after the fact that the Bette Midler show before he signed up, the day before his last show, he wished he could have ended it on that day mm -hmm. instead of the way it went? Um, I think in retrospect, Howard wishes he could have ended the K-Rock things better because he didn't. he didn't think it was that entertaining, and it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, my parents still, I, I had to argue with them. I go, the Bette Midler show was not the last show because that's what they remember because it was that yep. memorable because he cried. Oh, yes. And yes. everybody knows that scene. And, you know, so that's what sticks in your memory. But Howard didn't even give people that. There was no, no. before the bad show either. No, there wasn't. No. And it, was, it was all and garbage. It was no, it was all fair, like having people in to say as if he was leaving the fucking business or whatever, which, yes, he was leaving radio, but he wasn't leaving anything. So it was almost like, um, you know, having a farewell for a player that's going to another team. Well, you have you give them a send off, but you don't make it a month long funeral for someone who's not retiring. If you're retiring from the, the profession, that's very different. The smartest thing he did was tap into the angst people were feeling at the time in the Bush era of yeah. the censorship, the the everything that had to do after the Janet Jackson's thing. You know, people really were upset about censorship at the time. I remember that being a huge issue, especially for people who were liberal and libertarian. You know, and nobody could say boo about Bush and Cheney. They could do no wrong after 9-11. So it was a little, you know, he was a very counterculture figure during that time. And he rolled that wave perfectly. But yeah. could he have given a better send off in retrospect? Uh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Once a month, once a year, just so we can hear your voice, hear your perspective on what's going on in the world. 
the funny shit, the serious shit. Just please, I don't know, man. I don't know how the contract stuff works, but I, I, I need to hear your oh, voice. God. I've never seen you in person. That's one of my goals. You're um, lucky. <laughs> no, yeah. He is. What, can he slob on his knob any harder? I swear to God. Well, he eulogized him, his the news department. Now he's eul- having someone else eulogize him before he can, you know, this farewell at Madison Square Garden, for fuck's sake. Why don't you go I back get- and do a comedy show at the Ritz, buddy, and, and make amends he- for that? I know, exactly. I guess he didn't take Robin's scratch herself, uh, pat herself on the back doing gymnastics to do it. He didn't take that <laughs> literally. He doesn't no. understand. So clearly that went right out the window, and now he's going to have a fake call her, do something again to just reminisce about the good old days essentially i want to be attached to something that i was great it's it's constant reminders that i'm amazing i had something great it's not right now but you might lose me so please eulogize me in real time yeah before before i go like the the idea of tell people you love them before they pass away not not at their funeral that's when they really want to hear it But this is also, like we said, now since Ralph is dead, this is, I know he alludes to stuff like this often throughout his career about this is going to be my last contract. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. It builds up the hype. But this is a different tone to it where it seems to me that bringing up the news, now having this guy on, he's considering his career dead, essentially. And how am I going to revive it in real time? You know what? It just occurred to me. Imagine you're that called the back office staffer and you think to yourself, my what's my agenda for today? Oh, I've got to call in as a fake caller and tell Howard he's awesome. I That's know. your job. Like how soul crushing must that be? And would you think you really wouldn't tell your friends this is how bad the show has gotten that he has to I'm hired to be. A, a quote unquote call in person that's going to lather his ass up. They they have to pay me to do it. Like that DJ dude that you met that said they, uh, yes. they paid him to be online at the uh, the private parts premiere. Yep, I know. And I think that's very, but the surprising thing, you and I feel that way, but a lot of people will take whatever money they're given and they don't care what agenda is being pushed. It doesn't matter oh, yeah. to them. Oh, I yeah. mean, that goes for Howard. That goes for corporations and products. That goes for politics. People are completely shameless. And I had to find this out the hard way in life where I couldn't believe you could be this, I don't know, not attached to any sort of morals, values, inner self where something seems wrong or amiss. You don't mm-hmm. like the message that's attached to that person, but you don't care because that's a dollar coming your way. Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like, what the fuck, what's the, what's the deal where, you know, you're going to, um, like, I, I get it. I'm not going to shit on that person. Like, I'm just saying that you, you got to make it your end. You're going to make ends meet however you can. And if this is the gig calling Howard and telling him that, well, that's fine. That's wonderful. That's acceptable to anybody. It would, like as a people struggling to make ends meet, I totally get it. But internally you have to be thinking how, 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 How isn't Howard upset by the fact that this has to be the reality? I think people compartmentalize on their end, but I also think Howard is always that guy who has done whatever he's had to do to make it in the game, whether it be the book promotions or the private parts bullshit or the talk show crap or the e-show or the e-interview show whatever thing that he is churned out he will do whatever he has to do and i think you know that mentality has gone across the board like he said make fake twitter accounts i don't give a fuck it's, yeah it's shameless and he's happy so people, he's happy living in the lie so it doesn't bother him the, it does not bother him one bit and surprisingly i think a lot of people who pretend to be something on the surface are not like that. They will go to any ideology, any sort of whatever, sway whatever way the public wants them to be. Mm -hmm. But they don't really have any gumption or they don't have any real devotion to anything or care about the art or the cause or anything. Yeah. Well, anyway, I I will tell you one thing. The, um, the, the absolute, 
ass end of a person's life and their career is when this has to be it. You're like eulogizing yourself because uh-huh. no one else will. Like literally, you know. Um, You're paying for the eulogy. Yeah, with the, and, and also I realized there's two things. One one thing, do you remember we, not long ago we did a, a breakdown where we discussed uh, someone was at a football game and they shouted out Howard Stern, Howard Stern, Baba Booey's penis, Howard mm-hmm. Stern, whatever. So one of the one of the listeners was astute enough to, to point out that it was the audio was from a Family Guy episode and that they made a fa- phone phone uh, this this bullshit thing. It was completely. Right. Uh, created in yes. the studio. So we were right about that. The other one I have no confirmation on, but I listened to the Family Guy audio, identical. I knew we were right. Uh, you yeah. and I called it because we just have done this for so long where we can tell when something's original and yeah. when something's completely contrived. So yeah. I'm glad that that was pointed out and noted. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, now I can't remember because I'm a 79. So I'm going to continue, continue with this one clip and then we'll go with the next one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm I'd scare man. you. I want to. I want to meet you in person someday, or at least see you in oh, person. God. And um, and I'm going to keep calling up because if you ever do do a final um, live, you know, sign off, I want to be the first person on your guest list. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to just. Hey. I'm, I'm just going to keep hitting you up about it, man. And I'm all not right. going to ask for anything. And I just want to let you. I love. I love you, man. I love you, Robin. Love you, Gary. And I love you, Fred. So, uh, and great job, Silent Richard and the rest of the crew. I love you. All right. All right, King. Well, that's the same guy who fake cried. <laughs> it's so bad. I it, That is awful. I love all of you. Where, where are you guys going exactly? This is yeah. very strange to me. It's uber meta. It's very, it's very like. Um, great adjective. It, I mean, I just don't know. I mean, there. it's, it's, it's almost as if. It's not almost as if it is. You've created your own your your own universe and mm-hmm. that, that it makes sense to you, but on the outside it makes sense to no one. Well, it's very forced. It sounds forced. It doesn't sound organic in any mm-hmm. single way. This sounds as if remember that one caller who was almost crying that, um, I think this is the same one I think it's the same that's exactly guy what I th- I'm business. yeah and we were both like why is this guy upset right now he was right. saying oh I just love you man <laughs> he was like having a <laughs> breakdown about Leave Howard Brittany and Ralph alone. <laughs> yes and we were just so perplexed by this it sounds like the same person but again both things don't feel genuine when you used to get callers back in the day on Howard Stern and not and you didn't know how they were going to turn out and sometimes yeah. they'd be amazing and sometimes even the abysmal ones would be hilarious because it would end up in a fight or a screaming match or hanging up on that person and some sort of I don't know conflict would arise from it those all felt so genuine in your gut None of this feels genuine. None of this that I'm listening to right now feels organic, feels natural. There's a clip of uh, Steve Martin. Uh, he was promoting one of his banjo albums, of all things, which I have zero interest in, even though I like me love music, actually. Uh, but uh, I don't care about Steve Martin as a banjo player. Um, the He was talking about one of the songs on the album, which is, I think is called The Great Remember, and he dedicated it to uh, Nancy... Uh, short Martin Short's wife, mm-hmm. who passed away, and when he he doesn't bring up her name, but he he's, he you can tell he's choked the fuck up, and he has to go Aww. into the song, otherwise he's gonna cry because they were lifelong friends, like his him him and him. And Martin. <laughs> that reminds you of like when Stevie Nicks has to sing Silver Spoons across from Lindsey Buckingham, and like you know they they made her take it off the album, but it's. That whole time period when they broke up, they were writing songs to each other, essentially. And she's got to look across the stage and she's singing it into his eyes and she can't do it. And she cries every fucking time on stage. That was like the story behind them is incredible. Things like he threw a guitar at her on stage because he was so pissed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The roadies had to like, (laughs) like he had to be the roadies. You were, you know, her roadies basically were going to beat the fuck out of him. And at the same time, Christy, uh, what's her name? Christy McVie. And, and what's his together. face? We're getting divorced. So it was just yeah. this clusterfuck in- of incestuous. epic proportions, and the music that came out of it is the most amazing shit ever. Yes. 
It is. Yeah. I, I just 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 the other day I was listening to Gypsy and that's still I a love that. tremendous song. Yeah. It's I love so and good. I love Stevie Nicks especially, like Edge of Seventeen. Is there a better uh, song? Me and Nia just listened to a live performance in the car on the way to dance and she's like, I love this song. I go, Good girl. It's yeah, good yeah, girl. You know, you're just never gonna top like that one on the Fast Times of Ridgemont High soundtrack. I think it's called Sleeping Angel by Stevie Nicks. Uh-huh. Yes. It's it's so fucking good. And it's not even a fucking Fleetwood Mac song. It's just so I know. And I listen to it and 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 I go, not not none of these fucking current bitches could even approach it. None of not them. Not even n- her everything. Just give everything you can to this generation and you look at them now and you look at something like Stevie Nicks and I can't believe how much they're falling on their ass in comparison to somebody like Stevie Nicks. Right. Or even Christine McVie, her, her, her live version of songbird. Holy fuck. She's such a talent. And I love, I love watching old interviews of them and it's always like, what do you guys, you know, cause in rock and roll, you know, they're such fucking misogynist and they're like, well, they wouldn't have any songs if it weren't for us being a part of the group. So <laughs> yeah, abs- absolutely. So the next one is we're going into the 15th guys. Finally, this one's called wig. Never heard of Imus. People have said to me, my career, while well, you were going into radio, certainly you were influenced by Imus. And I said, you know, this is going to sound weird. And I'm not just saying it. I would tell you the truth. <clears throat> I really you didn't would? know <laughs> even of Imus. It sounds weird to be a New Yorker. I didn't know I was <laughs> <laughs> I was only on a poster with him. No big deal. Wait, like he, fuck. Anyway, we'll continue. Oh, please. Yeah. But I didn't really know about, I don't know why. I guess my father never listened to that or my mother. I listened to Bob Grant and um, there was another guy on uh, WMCA I used to listen to named uh, Alex Bennett. I would hear, or I would hear, uh, uh, oh gosh, there was some Malachi McCord and all these guys. And then some of the top 40 guys, but for some reason I missed I miss. And I was a disc jockey and I was starting to come up on, uh, you know, Detroit radio and stuff. And people would say, oh, did you used to listen to Imus? Every minute I heard about Imus, I said. Is he really rewriting this again? I mean. Yes, but he's, but he's we... fucked, he tripped over himself. He said people are accusing him of uh, inspiring, like being inspired by Imus when he was at Detroit. That would imply that he has heard. Like they, they if they think you're an Imus ripoff, then it means you're probably an Imus ripoff. And that wasn't the criticism he was giving. He was given, he is the copy of, what's his face? Steve Dahl. Yeah, exactly. So that's bullshit too then. Even if he's pretending now, rewriting his myth once again for the, I don't know, what was this, the thousandth rewrite? Thousandth time, yeah. Yeah, for real. So nobody said anything about I miss to you about being a copy. People were talking about you and Steve Dahl at the time, especially in Detroit. So shut your fucking mouth. You're fucking lying. Everything out of his mouth is a lie. Yeah, it really is that uh, it's like the greatest story forever told. (laughs) That nobody wants to read. That 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 nobody nobody wants to read. Right. I I asked my father, could you make a tape of I miss? I would like to hear what it is. And I remember listening to it and going, oh, that's not my, it's more, it's not my, you know, it was like, it's 702. In the- when did that happen? When did that happen? I have never well, heard him say this before. Well, he's going to say, okay, like, like if he was in Detroit, even if he was, when he did go to Detroit, he was a native New Yorker. How, when did, would he not have heard Imus as soon as Imus started? If this truly happened when Ben was alive, we would have gotten this story. But now that yes. Ben's six feet under... Yep. And you're bitching about paying for his fucking tombstone, you cheap shit. Right. Now we're going to hear this selective new story yeah, about the nonsense. myth where your father taped I miss randomly for yeah. real. Bullshit. Because I really, really want to hear what he sounds like. Yeah, okay. Morning. Quack, quack. You know, I didn't quack, uh, I didn't get it. It wasn't quack, even quack. a put down. It was just what's not my different? thing. What's, what's the difference? Wait, what's the difference between eh, eh, and hey now? What's the yeah. difference? Nothing. Nothing. And and hey, now he ripped off of Ralph. Exactly. <laughs> Even that's a ripoff. He admitted it. And it's a ripoff on the show. The Larry Sanders Larry show. Larry Sanders yeah, show. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I don't know that there were many radio guys I looked up to beside Bob Grant. Next one is called I Had Dinner with a Very Famous Rock Star. There are people <laughs> live streaming on Instagram to more people than an FM station. Really? It's really yeah. true. Yeah. The Kardashians. 
they, they could live stream to hundreds of millions of people at one time. I mean, well, then it's why just wouldn't all you get up. on this? That's the point. Is that why wouldn't you then SiriusXM as a corporation get an Instagram account where then your stars of SiriusXM could live stream at any point? Did you decide to do that? No, because you're a bunch of fucking idiots. Yep. That's what I mean. It's all over. I was talking to a very famous rock star recently off the air. We were uh, we were together. We had dinner together. And um, I said, dude, aren't you glad you came up when you did? And he was like, dude. oh, yeah. The, the, the music industry is all fucked up now. Everything's fucked up. Well, I understand what he's saying about the music industry, but it's a mm. different industry. You're not, yeah. it's not, it's apples and oranges for you two. Yeah. But what I will say is that the legacy of rock stars music who are worth any salt, people like Fleetwood Mac that we were just saying, if they decide they want to go tour, they're selling out. They're making yeah, bank. They, they don't well, need to live stream shit. And the people like Madonna, who are so desperate to hang on, like you said, aren't selling out. And they look pathetic on live streams because they just don't get it. Well, they're, they're, now they can be exposed. It was so much harder to expose in real time what was happening at these concerts because there was pre-internet, you know, but like no one yep. is going to report on it in Rolling Stone if they want a, a Madonna interview. They're not going to, they're just not going to print something that was a, a hit piece necessarily. In the old days, they would have. Um, but, uh, and touring used to be to the benefit of the record company to sell records. And there was right. very little, you know, like now it's the, it's the bread and butter for any, any artist. They're not selling records the way they used to. They're not going to make money that way unless they sell them online themselves, you know, band, uh, sound SoundCloud or whatever the fuck, uh, band camp. But, um, now they're basically touring to earn a living, and that never used to be the case. Tours used to be either gravy if they were massively selling like the Rolling Stones or promotion for the record company. Yeah, it's a sad situation. And, you know, I just think I just think that Howard is saying these things because he also is come to this point where he realizes his career is no longer it's it's just not making it's not going to make the money it once did it never no. will there's no place no. for him to go and so he's trying to kind of put himself juxtaposed against these artists these rock stars as if it's something similar but it's not no it isn't and the next clip is in is tied into that it's called it's time to leave no, Being right. on the radio, you're a schlub. You know what I mean? You're just like everybody else. You yeah. talk in a microphone. I do too. <laughs> I can't tell you how I can't stand it. I'll go out to dinner with people and, oh yeah, I have a radio show. They go, well, I know you do, but stop it. I know somebody called us the other day and they said, oh, hey. you know, people, by the way, too, you were saying that backstage, they would, have to ask for pictures or something in publications would have to come up and talk to people but it's different now they used to say like at the viper room you know that was a place for celebrities to hang where mm -hmm. they could not be celebrities where they just yeah. felt they were in with their peers and there was no buddy there that johnny depp wouldn't allow in basically yeah. he was king of the door he was the whatever his name is from studio 54 steve, like steve <laughs> rebel yeah steve rebel and it was a place for them to let their hair down, but because people who were famous back then didn't like being famous. They liked being rich. They liked being successful in their craft, but they right. didn't necessarily like being famous. And then that all changed when you got the Kardashians, you got Paris Hilton, you got the reality TV stars. And then being famous was more important than any sort of body of work you were working in. And that all died away. So, yep. Have you heard the radio show with Jimmy and Jimmy and... I Sam? know. Yeah. Those guys, guys, <laughs> those guys have a radio show. <laughs> like, yeah, there's nothing too special Kimble, about doing Kimble. this anymore. That's why it'll be time soon to leave. You know what I mean? It's it's enough. Okay. Yeah, people can now listen to their next door neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, you know, my neighbor has a show. It's sort of an inspirational show. Oh, okay. The second you get competition, you want to throw in the towel. Yeah, and so folding. the reason the reason that 
now people can have a voice and do it and they're doing it better and their numbers are actually showing up where they don't have this deal that hides their hand. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't have that protection that you have, the serious XM mafia that hides the hand of your actual numbers. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. So you get to have these elusive deals with these elusive numbers that nobody ever gets to the bottom of. No. And you're going to shit on and say, now anybody can have one. Well, wouldn't that make you want to be more competitive if you were really fucking something? Wouldn't that make you want to say, it doesn't matter who gets a fucking microphone in their basement or their grandma's house. It doesn't matter. I am the fucking goat. Now watch me fucking work. You know what this is? Uh, the, the analogy I'm thinking of is someone having to take their grandfather's car keys away from them because they can't drive anymore. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's so because good. like that episode of the Wonder Years when he hit Kevin and his oh grandfather, they, either in a, they almost God. have a car accident and he sells them the car for a buck. <laughs> like this fucking Oldsmobile Omega, whatever the fuck it is. Anyway, I'm telling you, it, it's it's he, he he's I, we've talked about this many times. He's the loads of clips of him talking shit about podcasts. He just hates the fact that he's no longer um He's no longer the big kahuna. Yes, absolutely. But he hates the fact that it's become easier than ever to not just podcast at home, like make a make a radio show. It's essentially a radio show. You can record music at home, edit it on your fucking computer, release it, have a website, sell it at home. And he doesn't and he does that thing, which musical artists have done and shit on this before. But bring those up and comers. You should have brought them into your world. You should have made yourself immersed into this world. Instead, you shunned it. You shunned it. And now you're stuck. You're backed into a corner. And we're getting eulogies. Yep. If he had, if he had been smart, he would have surreptitiously somehow, I don't know how this you figure this out, but somebody would, fund a podcast platform back in the day. Make it like yeah. a Spotify. Get Tap all kinds of talent. You have the money to do it. Then you can get, like, initially the startup's going to cost a lot. It will. And I know it would have been against SiriusXM, but he should have had the foresight if he was such a genius to see these this shit popping off. And he would have said, listen, we have to do something radical mm -hmm. with this channel. And the radical thing is we're going to be bringing different shows on that have nothing to do with our show, but we're bringing them on. Remember that news station? I fired all those people. We have this extra <laughs> channel. Yeah. We're going to be bringing on the bonfire. We're going to be bringing on the Rogan show. We're going to be bringing on all of uh, Corolla, whatever. Portnoy, Tim Dillon yeah. or uh, what's his name? Tim Dillon. Is that his name? Yeah. Tim Dillon. You, 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 okay. you name dropped him a couple times. Yeah. I just want to make sure I got that right. I He's yeah. funny. I like him. He's he's a good guest. I will give him that. Like I, I don't. He's my him. favorite guest because he's he's so satirical. Well, he certainly is not afraid to give his opinion of certain things. There's no question about that, and that's what makes any good podcast episode good. People that actually want to do the dance with you. He makes me laugh out loud regularly yeah. because he's so. He says absurd things, and he mm -hmm. knows it. But he acts serious about it, and it makes me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's here's a, here's a funny story I will tell you. This isn't a humble brag, guy. The resort we're at, the guys. This is a uh, the resort we're at. The, the fuck pool, off! The, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> the swimming pool. The swimming pool. When, when, you know, when you're in Southeast Asia, it's it's not costing what you guys think it costs. Um, the swimming pool is great. Like it's actually a good size swimming pool, but the filters are a little uh, dodgy. You know, the the jets. You know, on the side of the pool that they yeah. have. Uh -huh. This one, so this one is fucked up a little. So what happens is it has intermittent bursts, so it just sounds like someone farting. <laughs> <laughs> so if you sit next to it, like if you're just resting next to it after you finish swimming, it's like maybe I should stay away from this guy. <laughs> That's cute. Anyway, um, what? So yeah, if I if I were to trade my American money in to go there, how far would it go? Oh my God! I, I got to look. Well, what's what's the conversion rate right now? It, I'd say hold on, uh, one U.S. dollar. Oh, one sec. I don't know. One U.S. Is. dollars worth what? absolutely nothing technically, but on this no. fake house of cards that we're pretending. <laughs> yeah, let me give let me give you let me give you an example. Okay, um, one U.S. dollar probably would get you like 
uh, the equivalent of what? Okay, let me give you an example. Your what's a, what's an average Starbucks coffee like? A small, a, sh- a, t- a short of what do they call it? Five twenty-five. Five twenty-five. It's probably less than half here. Wow. Yeah, and for a, a room that you would probably pay a hundred and thirty bucks for, like a, a mm-hmm. hotel room that you pay hundred thirty bucks at a resort with all the amenities here, mm, closer to like a third, like fifty fifty bucks maybe. Wow. Well, when bricks kicks in, I wonder. I wonder when <laughs> this is all gonna go to shit. The house of cards of the U.S. petrodollar is gonna go way fucking down. Get ready, people. <laughs> I'm telling you, retire to the Philippines. There's, you know, yeah, they're, na- they're buy gold. They're, yeah. Well, there are na- there are natural disasters. Yes, you gotta occasionally get a, a typhoon or a goddamn earthquake or a volcano. But the flip side is, uh, you'll never shovel a fucking driveway a day in your life. I have a meeting with my financial advisor next week and I'm telling him, I, I'm saying to him, listen, in 2004 or something, the U.S. dollar was 56 cents. Mm-hmm. So like that's what it was worth. It's now worth two cents, essentially, <laughs> if you really were to. So why am I spending all this money on a stock market, on a fake pile of money in 33 trillion in debt? for our country and then we have this you know opposing money system bricks that's gonna take over eventually i think i need to invest in silver and gold (laughs) that's what i'm gonna say i'm not but i'm telling you I'm telling you, take a hundred and a hundred and twenty thousand, sell whatever equity you got in your house. You will get a villa on like somewhere in the Philippines, like in Bull Hole, and Just you'll leave. get a sw- you, and you will get a swimming pool that you never have to fucking you never have to heat. It's 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 already heated. I'm gonna play this for Rick, and I'm like, the empire's ending. We have to go. <laughs> Nero, the fiddler, like the, <laughs> depending on how the election goes, <laughs> get prepared to hear the fiddle pretty soon. Anyway, no, we it play doesn't a even more. matter. It's been gone. It's yeah. We, anyway, we're just pretending at this point. Well, guys, yeah, you never know. But the last one here, guys, for today, Dave from Maine asks about Dolly Parton audiobook, and this is before audio. This was Dolly getting ready to come in for the interview, but this was Dave from Maine. Dave, go ahead. You're on in Maine. No, quite quite. Quack, quack. Any chance? Any chance you can ask uh, Dolly about the audiobook? Her audio. Oh book, yeah. You? Oh geez, no. I'm so glad she's coming in. I am bringing that up. But uh, oh. are you crazy? We kept her out of here for so long. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I'm so happy she's coming in. I'm not looking to. I'm looking to. Have, yeah. Oh We burned no. those tapes. Yeah, you're not kidding. Oh. <laughs> to me, it was a loving tribute, but. It wasn't taken that way. She didn't take it that way. Uh, that's right. Okay, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> audiobook. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of stuff to play for you, including Dolly Parton's audiobook. Oh, really? Yeah, that's some book. God damn, I love nigger cock. Oh, no. <laughs> that's from her audiobook. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why they didn't want that. You know what I mean? They, yeah. For a burrito? Well, they had a problem. I like uh, if we, if they I, got a whole bunch. No, I knew it was There's happening. your burrito. I knew it was Go out. ahead, eat. There yeah. it goes. <laughs> Thanks, I don't want it to get cold. There Thanks, Rich. Look what just got happy. Wow. <laughs> 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 There's my burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's hungry. That's exactly right. It's feeding time. Put something in his fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs>